Hey, how's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Zamorx channel. Today, we're going to be building the High Grade Cosmic Era, the Infinite Justice Gundam. So, this Gundam right here, I actually got two stories to share. So, the first one is why this review is so late because, you know, it's a bit of a bummer because my eyes were so big when I was trying to order it from eBay and then the seller didn't say that it was pre-order. I thought it would be came to my house as soon as it released, but it turns out it was a pre-order, so which is why it's so late. And now it finally appeared in my house, thank God. So the second story that I'm sharing is actually my personal opinion towards the Sid Destiny series, because let's be honest, it's a mess. The storyline, plots, even the logic, they were a joke. Anyone with a common sense, if you just take a look at the final battle and then you just take a look at the logic, the storyline, the plot, the motivation, none of them make sense because it really felt like Kira, Lacus, they just want to kill people for fun, for their own authority and power. If today you ask me, Kira and Lacus, were they the good guys? I would definitely tell you, no, they were terrible. Throughout the whole final battle or any kind of speech, they don't provide us a reason why they want to kill Durando. And then Afran just joined like midways and be like, cool, I will follow you around and just killing everybody and then we can take the whole council. So I'm going to make a very biased and personal comment right here. I don't like anybody from that Gundam Seed Destiny series. The only characters that I liked is actually Gilbert Durando and Shinas Cat because I believe that Shinas Cat is a victim and he is not a bad guy actually. So anyway, maybe in the future, I will open up a separate video and then just talk about the whole Sea Destiny. But today, we're going to focus back on the gunplay itself first. So right now, you can see that it's a very famous pose. Everybody, anybody that watched the Sea Destiny final battle, you recognize this pose instantly. It's the Infinite Justice kicking Destiny in the leg. I think it's in the leg in the anime, but on the box art is on the arm so uh, it's a little bit off but okay so personally i have hard feelings towards this box art right here but it looks really cool for the drawing but for the story behind it i actually pretty hate this box art so let's just take a look at the side of the box right here we can see the standing position the actions gimmicks the explanation of the weapons as well all the explanation is on here you can just pause it here and read it if you feel like it Let's turn it to the other side right here. We can see the description of the Infinite Justice Gundam. So I'm not boring to read that. If you're interested, you can just read it. So anyway, let me just get everything out of the box. All right, let's take a look at the instruction manual first. So first, we got the details, the standing position. Turn it to the back right here. We can see the development history, weapons, color guide. And then let's flip it into the inside. And uh, here we go. We got the parts. Here's a little bit of extra, extra pages, and that's it. So, you know, just a quick FYI for you guys, in case you don't know that Infinite Justice Runner developed from that weird looking knight thing, Gampa from the build divers called the Justice Knight. But actually, how many of you know that actually before Sea Destiny came out, um, the directors or whoever was planning the name of the Infinite Justice Gundam. Infinite Justice Gundam, back in the days, is actually not called Infinite Justice Gundam, it's called Night Justice Gundam. And I feel like that Bill Divers, um, they calling it the Justice Knight, is sort of like a reference back in the days for the history. Let's take a look at the runners now. So first we got the A runner right here. Um, we can see the torso parts, the head parts, and then we can see this part right here. I assume is the shield or oh wait actually it's the huge wing thing at the backpack and then these parts right here I'm not sure this is the antenna and then we got some thruster part and the thruster part is actually not great if you if you just you know give it a little bit of light you can see that it's actually leaning towards like a glossy aluminium or silver and then also for the rest of the part let me just take a quick guess i guess this one is the arms and this one is the side skirt and possibly this is the shoulders and then the rest of the part i'm not really sure so b1 and b2 runner again you can see that really glossy it's sort of like a glossy i'm yeah i think that's how we call it the glossy silver color right here so it's actually a very similar design to the strike freedom xgc version where it got like a 
glossy gold, metallic gold, or whatever they're called, for the inner frames. So right now we got the B1 and B2, and let's take B1 as the example right here. So overall, it's the inner frame of the Infinite Justice. We can see the hands option, and we can see this is the feet part. The rest of the parts, forgive me, I actually don't remember which part is which. We got the C1 and C2 runner. They are mostly for the body parts. So first, let me take a guess. This will be the arms part, legs, feet, and then this will be the legs. And then we got the waist armor right here. And then we also got the waist armor. We got the side skirt. Oh wait, actually, this might be the arms part. And uh, feet. And uh, the rest of it is very hard for me to guess. So we got a D1 and D2 runner. Um, so D1 is black and then the D2 runner is gray. So D1 runner right here, this will be the torso and part of the thruster, I assume. And then for the D2 runner is the inner frame of the Infinite Justice. We got like E1 and E2 runner, they were pretty much the same, so I'll just take one. So E1 runner right here, we can see the shield, we can see rival. Rival and the rest of it, forgive me, I actually don't know which part is which. This might be the head. Might. Wait, actually, no, this might not be the head. Wait, this is not the head part, what I'm talking about. We got the F1 and F2 runner right here. We got the rival base right here. And then we also have, I assume this is the backpack part. And then the rest of it is just some joint parts that for me is very hard to guess. We got the G runner right here. So mostly the parts is for the backpack, the Phantom Zero One got the H2 runner, which is the beam shield. The H1 runners for the beam effect parts. We also got a wire and also some stickers, very limiting stickers. So the color separation is going to be very good, I assume. So anyway, let's just stop talking and then let me go to the review first. Hey guys, welcome back to the review of the Infinite Justice Gundam. So this is the finishing of it. I do want to say that although this is listed as XGCE, but this one right here really gave me the feeling of a mini RG. Before I was recording, I was playing with the articulation, I was playing with the um, overall gunplay. Those scale, color separation, gimmicks, it really gave me a feeling of RG. Like if you just take a look at this Infinite Justice right here, although it's a XG, but it got a standard as ARG is really nice, is amazing. I was just saying at the beginning of the video, even though you're just like myself, you don't like Sid Destiny, you don't like the pilot. But speaking of the Goblet itself, I think this is a must buy. And if you're someone that had the 2005 Infinite Justice, you would definitely see a huge upgrade. And luckily, I actually had it in my shelf. So I already took it out and I definitely will do a comparison in this review. So if you ask me, is there any part that I need to repaint? Yes, the handle of the beam saber and also some small layer inside the thruster. You do need a little bit of green and for the handles, you need a little bit of pink and purple, but that's fine. If you're someone as lazy as myself, I think you can buy this as well because you basically don't have to repaint anything and Vandahari gave you every color that you need. Quit chatting, let me introduce to you the new Infinite Justice. Before we go into the articulation part, I just like to do a quick comparison part. So right now at the left side right here, you got the newest most updated Infinite Justice. At the right side right here, we got the 2005 old Infinite Justice. So first, for the scales, you can see an obvious changes because the newest version is taller and then the old version is too short in my opinion. I actually don't like the old scale. And for the colors, you can see that the Infinite Justice at the left side right here is, is kind of like using the color in the anime and at the right side right here the color is really too off in my opinion it doesn't look like the anime color and you can see that the newest version of the infinite justice it got way more color overall on the body and at the right side right here it's like a really plain color it's just like a couple colors snapping together it doesn't really have that layer of color when you take a look at the backpack right here the newest infinite justice every part every color is part separation is absolutely beautiful and on the right side right here you can see a lot of stickers on the backpack right here and it actually requires you for a lot of recoloring as well if you want to look better so for the newest version right here definitely looks the best for the right side right here is 
is really outdated. I'm not even bothered to go through the color variance and also the articulation difference because let's be honest, there's a 15 years gap between them. So what do you expect? As usual, we're going to start with the head. So for the head, every color that you see right now is going to be by part separation. For the stickers, as usual, it's going to be the eyes, it's going to be the cameras and also the sensors. So let's take a look at the articulation right here. So first, lift up, lift down, it's really good. And then moving 360 is really free as well. So for the head articulation, there's no interruption. For the chest, we got extra articulation and every color that you see on the chest right now is by part separation except this black part right here. This black part right here is stickers. So for the articulation, those are moving back and front is a really nice angle. Moving front and back is a really nice angle. And we can also move, uh, move around 360 with no interruption as well. So the movement is actually really nice. And then we can also move side to side as well. So you can pose with it actually really freely. So take a look at the arms and shoulders. Unfortunately, this time for the infinite justice, we don't have any option hands. So you're just going to need to stick with these kind of normal XG hands that they provided. So first, for the shoulders, you can move 360. And then for the shoulders, there's an individual joint for you to lift up and lift down. And we can also move the whole arm to the front. And then for the bending though, it's absolutely nice touching the shoulders. And then for the whole arm, you can rotate around as well. And also the whole arm can lift up straight 90 degrees, really nice. And these kind of holes right here is for you to plug in the shield. But unfortunately, both sides, they got the holes. So it might kind of affect the visual appearance. So if you really hate this kind of hole, without purposes, then you can just fill it up with like some putty or something like that. So let's take a look at the waist armor right here. For the front skirt, each one of them can move separately, just like this. And for the side skirt right here, we can lift up and then we can also move to the back as well. I'll explain to you why this skirt armor can move to the back because, you know, it's kind of like don't interrupt the legs movement. I will show you later. And for the back skirt right here, finally, we can lift up the back skirt. So. The back skirt is no longer affecting the overall articulation. But for the side skirt right here, you can see some beam sabers. And actually, this beam saber is the part that I have a little bit of comment about it. So first, this beam saber at first is really easy to fall out because oftentimes when you're trying to play with the side skirt or the legs, this kind of storage, uh, the storage of the beam sabers will always pop out and to use the beam saber is pretty simple. You can just take off the armor and then just use it and then stick onto the beam saber effect parts. If you want to use the combined version, you just don't combine both of them simply. You got another piece for you to play with it. And also, as I just mentioned, the beam saber handle, you need to repaint it to purple or pink. Well, actually purple and pink. It's finally the time for us to take a look at the legs articulation. So first, kicking to the front mm, is pretty nice, 9 degrees. And then kicking to the back is also 90 degrees, so which is really nice. Kicking to the side is mm, it's 90 degrees, but we can further extend the articulation. I will show you how to do it. So first you move out the side skirt, and then we just simply adjust the part even more. And then you can just clip it back in, and then we can kick even higher. So the maximum side kicking is about, it's about like 120 degrees, I would say. You can see that the Infinite Justice actually kicked really high so this joint is specifically designed for you to recreate the kicking scene where it kicked the destiny for well, the bending though is really nice is it's like a perfect u shape and then for the feet down here we can bend it at the tip and then we can also move front to back overall we can move a little bit of side to side this black piece of armor right here got a little bit of movement as well turn it to the back right here at the back of the feet right here we got the thruster and we can also move a little bit of it as well. For the famous kicking scene, of course Bandai provide us the beam effect parts for you to recreate that kicking scene. So I'm gonna show you how to put on the beam saber. I mean the beam effect parts. So first you plug in the part on the feet first and then you move down the feet and then you plug it in to the legs part. So this will be how you create the kicking beam effects. How about I just took off the backpack individually and it just explained to you because you know, let's be honest, if I just put it onto the Gampla, it's very hard for me to introduce like those small gimmicks and small articulations. So first, let's take a look at the Phantom 01 backpack right here. 
every color on this backpack is by part separation as i just mentioned and that's actually a lot of articulation and gimmicks as well so first let's take a look at the beam cannons right here so the beam cannons can move 180 and then it can also move a little bit side to side as well the head of the phantom zero one can also flip out and then it can retract back as well but on my gunpla the phantom zero one for some reason appeared to be a little bit loose so you know for myself it kind of felt a little bit annoying but that's fine and for the backpack itself it can move a little bit side to side as well you know up in front and then you can extend the wings as well like this and on the wings you can put on a beam evac part as well so just simply put it in like this so this is what the beam effect part looks like let's take a look under the phantom zero one so first we got a little bit of movement at the backpack position right here and then we can also flip out two handles as well these two handles were for you to pose the infinite justice holding the backpack and then flying as well so there's two handles for you to show that wow 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 we also got one hole right here for you to plug it onto the action base so you can let your infinite justice look like it shoot out the phantom zero one and then just attacking the enemy if you want to make a pose where the justice is shooting at the front with the rival and the backpack cannon facing the front back in the days you have to take off the head and then you know flip up the backpack and then put it back the head nowadays it's way more simpler all you have to do is to lift up the backpack because there's a little bit of movement at the cannon right here all you have to do is to lift up and then you know slightly adjust the head and then let let it come down like this and then move it back like this so then you can make the pose where the justice is shooting at the front right here actually once you made this pose the standing position of the justice justice is still pretty fine so it's a pretty stable pose as well it's time to go through the accessories so first accessory that we got is the beam rival right here the pink park right here is the stickers if you can't deal with it you can just simply repaint it and for the rival right here honestly there's not much things to talk about the scope got a little bit of movement the rest of them is uh fixed so you cannot do any movement but if you don't want to use the beam rival you can just move down the scope and then simply store it at the back skirt right here next up is the shield this shield actually have a lot of ways to play with it i really like this design right here so first uh, we have the boomerang down at the bottom right here you can just simply put in the beam effect parts and then just use it or you can use it like a you know like a striking shield or you can just take it out and use it as an individual boomerang you know simply just move the angle and then you know let the justice to hold this part and you can use the boomerang freely the second and third way to play with this shield is to remove this part right here first option right here we can put on the beam shield you know just simply put it on like this and then just find a spot snap it back in and there you go that's your beam shield or there's another way for you to play with it you see it right here the rocket anchor we can just simply open this up and then put in the wire right here and then just stick it to the other end let's put it back onto the shield But I do want to say that even though the wire looks amazing and then you can, you know, detach the rocket anchor and then make some poses, um, it still have that problem where, you know, because it's a wire, it's soft, so it cannot lift up the rocket anchor. So to pose with the rocket anchor is really difficult. I would suggest you to cut the wire to shorter so you can, you can still pose with it because the wire is, you know, is pretty long, so it will kind of affect your posing. If you don't want to look like something that is so sloppy and then moving up and down, you can just cut the wire very short and make it look like it's just been launched. For the final step, I'm going to show you how to put on the shield onto the gobbler. But there's a really weird thing. Inside the shield, there's a handle, but you cannot use it. And instead, you have to use another piece to connect the shield to the arm which sounds a little bit weird to me but anyway to put on the shield is actually quite simple you just find the spot at the side of the arm and then just step it in and there you go that's how you put on the shield anyway this will be the end of the video thank you guys for watching this review so i would like to give my quick summary about the infinite justice right here 
I really think that you should be definitely picking this up, even though you don't like the pilot, even though you don't like the anime just like myself, it's still a very good gameplay for you to play with. The accessories is really good, they have a lot of ways for you to play with it, the backpack especially done a really nice job. It's a, it's like a top to bottom change compared to the really old one. The color separation looks amazing as well. You don't have to repaint anything if you are lazy. You know, I saw a lot of comments down on my videos asking like, hey, do like a must buy XG list or something, some kind of video like this. Now, I'm gonna tell you strictly, this Infinite Justice is a must pick up. It's a really nice gameplay. It done a really good job. So I'm definitely recommend you to pick one up. So this will be the end of the review. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit the bell next to the subscribe button so you can get notified whenever I upload a new video. And I'll definitely see you in the next review. Goodbye.